everybody. Okay, looks at looks like we are Get live. Get those nerds, nerds! Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bid Nerds. It's Thursday, and uh, my name is John Polnick. I'm your host of the Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out, the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids and Bring a Trailer and all the other automotive auction websites out there, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, the smart one. Uh, he's coming to you from San Francisco, and I'm back in my studio right here in Las Vegas, right on the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, I am not relegated to, no his, to, uh, yeah. <laughs> to Michael Deeb's deck. If you were watching yesterday's dumpster fire of an episode, we did oh it. Uh, we were both in San Francisco, and we had some technical issues, but we muscled through it, and thank you for those of you who did Seriously. along with us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Good to be back in the studio. I got Patootie, my producer over here. Um, yeah. And uh, my wife made me a lovely cup of uh, espresso. So I, uh, I'm, 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 all, I'm awake or yeah. something closely resembling my, to it. My producer is asleep on the couch in the sun across the room. So mm. yeah, I'm on my own. <laughs> smart, smart. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. If you've never watched the show before, what we do is we pick a handful of cars um, that are hammering today on the auction block. Uh, we, we, we go to Cars and Bids. We go to Bring a Trailer. We go to Rad for Sale, or we will when that uh, when that site launches. Sometimes we go to Hemmings. Uh, sometimes we check out P-Car Market. There's a bunch of other ones springing up. Um, and uh, we just find the cars that speak to us. Uh, we get suggestions from you, the audience. And, um, you know, we just, we basically, uh, we nerd out about those darn cars. Uh, yep. We talk about our experiences. And then we make predictions as to what we think they will actually <laughs> sell for and that's where the rubber hits the road as oh, they say and um, <laughs> yeah a lot of damage is done in that regard uh, so we just give you this warning at the top of the show do not listen to a dang thing we say this is not yeah. a financial advice uh, <laughs> show uh, if you put yeah. any of your money on us you are yeah. asking for hurt um, yeah. and chances but, uh, <laughs> are your financial advisor doesn't even want you listening to the show yeah yeah well, watch one of the other shows Shows. We do no research. We don't yeah. know what we're talking about. Yeah, we're not um, plugged in. Yeah, we're not plugged into the community. Uh, we we don't know anyone, and nope. uh, we have horrible collections. Um, yeah, yeah, we're just we're we're a bunch of nobodies. Uh, right. With that said, uh, let's talk about our predictions from yesterday. We always oh, we, the man. one thing that we are on this show. Un, w- w- like I said, we are not smart. We're not intelligent. <laughs> we do no research, but we are accountable. We yeah. do actually keep. Track track of our of our and, predictions and, I, and we don't forget about it we go back and yeah. talk about it and i would assert we're consistently inconsistent <laughs> boom yes we yeah. are there it is all right guys so, yeah. um, I, I had a i had a great monday jp and then yesterday yes, was did. pretty even uh and then tuesday was pretty even and then yesterday oh man revenge of the nerds if ever mm. there was one you got it <laughs> all back uh our star <laughs> car yesterday was the uh Forcus. We were looking on about uh, Doug DeMiro's audience and questioning the question that we, we posted to the audience was, did we think that Doug DeMiro's basic platform audience and, uh, and consumer, could they afford a Ford Focus RS like the one we selected, the 2018 with about 10,000 miles, uh, probably just about to come out of warranty. But this was one of the final editions of a really super hot hatch for that uh, – a model that has largely been unobtainium in the U.S. They, they finally Ford finally brought the European version with all its glory. You're talking about a four-cylinder turbo that makes 350 horsepower, drives all wheels, uh, has a six-speed manual, big racing buckets and fancy brakes and the seats and the whole thing. Um, they finally brought one here, but then they they pulled it after two years. Uh, so these cars are holding their value pretty well. But the question is, is somebody that watching Doug DeMiro's videos that then follows him on his auction site can they afford to stroke a check for this car and you and i largely think that this car they'd have to get a loan for this is problem when you're looking at an auction site you can't yeah. get pre-approved because you don't know what it's going to sell for and if you don't have the money sitting there you can't bid till the end so uh you know it's it's just kind of a it's a funny take, but probably an accurate one. So there you go. Yeah, uh, and, I, and and as much as we kind of ragged on uh, cars and bids yesterday, I think it's a unique problem for cars and bids because cars and bids sell so few cars in relation to or relatively to uh, mm-hmm. bring a trailer. Bring a trailer sells five right. times the cars. Uh, you know, they say, bring a trailer sells more cars in a day than cars and bids does in a week. So they're struggling oh, oh. to catch up. 
I mean, I'm yeah. more than more than Hemmings. Yeah, <laughs> listen, more yeah. than Hemmings, Picar, and Cars and Bids does collectively. Combined, yeah, you're league. absolutely right. Yeah, like, yeah. they sell yeah. seventy cars a day. Those guys collectively can barely scratch sixty. I mean, like it's yeah. it's it's yeah, it's uh, they're them and there's everybody else. It's, crazy. it's true, it's true. And so I think anyone <laughs> looking for this car, and that's and that's my point is it's not just a it's it's not a unique problem just to Cars and Bids. It's a problem for anyone that's looking for the demographic that wants this car this rs which is a magnificent car fantastic but it's too boy racer it's too you know it's too vapey for guys our (laughs) age to drive something like that and it's guys our age that can afford to buy something like this without getting a loan right Right. so the the kid that wants this and rightly so i mean if you're a young enthusiast by all means, this is definitely should be at the top of your list if you're oh going to have one car yeah. and you yeah. want an enthusiast car. Uh, but, you know, 20-something uh, shouldn't be spending uh, $40,000 cash on a car yeah. like this. They should be spending their money much more wisely. Uh, yeah. And and it makes sense to get a low-interest loan on something like this and this be your driver. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and, and <laughs> Cars and Bids seems to attract more of that type of person, which I think is what's holding Cars and Bids back is that they keep getting these modern enthusiast cars, but modern enthusiast cars are the demographic that wants them are younger. They don't have the disposable right. income. They Mom, I found yeah. a car to go to college in. Empty the garbage. <laughs> you know, like. Right. <laughs> but it'd be it's, so cool. Yeah. I mean, it's got analog she, brakes. She agrees. And then she finds out that her and her husband would have to get a third job to pay the insurance. So that little snot nose can get to school. I remember trying nothing. to sell my parents on helping me out to buy a car. I'm like, Hey mom, I found a Japanese <laughs> yeah, I, I found a perfect, perfect rig yeah, for right? for my first for for my first uh, Dakar. It's Japanese. Has low. It only has like eight thousand miles on it. Oh um, it's got a small motor, so it's really good on fuel. And she's like, and and she's like perking up, going, "Okay, okay, we might help you with that." And I'm like, "Yeah, um, it's a '86 Kawasaki Ninja uh, 650." <laughs> no way. It was all the things I said. It sipped gas, yeah, and it was Japanese, so it was super so reliable. They weren't having it. Yeah. Nope, yeah, nope, nope, nope. Nobody yeah. falls for that crap. Whatever. All right, so our focus was looking pretty good yesterday. <laughs> uh, I said 41,000. I thought I was posed to have a strong finish. You bet the under and said 40. This damn thing stalled out at 35,000 bucks. Uh, it had no late flurry at all, and that was uh, – it maybe got one or two more bids after we looked at it, and that was the end of it. So um, – by all accounts, I'd say that's pretty well bought. 10,000 miles, probably still under warranty or just off of warranty. It's just a lot of car for the money. Uh, these are over 50 grand when they were new. So, I mean, right, but you know, the you gotta, performance is unreal. I, we don't want to take too much more time on the focus, but you got to think, I mean, at you're talking in the, at $35,000, you could get, the nicest like uh gti or golf r um with a few more miles on the market for in the 20s i mean this that's a lot of money to spend for a hot hatch there's a lot of competition in that space especially in the used market there's no golf r except the new one that's coming that could keep up with that thing like from a from a bang for the buck this is still yeah, the, yeah. I mean, it's fa- it's fantastic, but you're spending fifteen thousand dollars more than what you would for yeah, a, for a, a used golf sure. R of the same vintage. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, uh, what do we got next? Okay, uh, then we jumped over to P Car Market to say hi to our dear friends over there. Mm. Um, they were offering over in Long Mexican. Island. Yeah, they uh, they had that two thousand three triple black C four cab with a manual. Mike, uh, Michael no, Deep, do, do no. you like the Porsches? Yeah, the Porsche is really good, you know. Okay. We're making <laughs> fun of P Car Market guys. Hi, oh, P Car Market God. guys. We love those guys. They are they're almost as much regular content as all these auction sites mm. combined. <laughs> they're our biggest uh, audience as well, apparently, uh, because we have six people watching. Two of them are from P Car Market. Yeah, two of them are in their office. Yes. Yeah, so. mm. yeah. yeah. Hi Chachi. Us off right now. Yeah. <laughs> Hi Chachi represents the uh, the other the other portion. Oh man, I uh, love Chachi. Shout out to Chachi. How you doing, Chachi? Okay, and so old Chachi, school. We got some great fans out there, man. Yeah, Let me Chachi, you. Chachi, we are all over you. Chachi Ramirez, uh, JP, I was mentioning, is practically my brother-in-law because his mm. wife and my wife are like really close friends uh he's down there in like nipmo down uh like pismo beach area would you call uh, him uh practically my brother-in-law is no 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 okay? i was just i was making a nismo you nipmo him. yeah yeah no no, no he isn't his racist uh, he's, a, he's a producer like you i think you guys would actually get along 
Mm. But he has the gift where he sees something and then does look at it for what it is, but what, for what it can be. I have it a little bit. You have it a lot. And he touched absolutely happened. Him and his buddy bought a uh, 80 Cadillac uh, limousine and then weaponized it. They put boy <laughs> band as the uh, as the vanity play, and then they use it as a prop in their wedding. Everybody did photos. Of and now yeah. he's restoring a Nissan uh, 280Z. Chachi Ramirez, we're all over you. You're going to be on the show in the next week or two. Uh, we love you, man. Thanks for watching. All right, here we go. Uh, so this P car offered this car. It was nice of them to mention that the, they had no idea if the IMS had been done. Buyer beware. Uh, but by all accounts, a 40,000 mile triple black C4 cab with a manual is still a nice car. Uh, obviously, the enthusiasts would prefer, prefer it to be a two wheel drive. But when you see one this clean and that low miles, you think uh, this could be a deal. Uh, anyways, I drank the Kool Aid. I said 30 grand. JP kept it real and said 27. This car sold for 23,500. So I say congratulations to the buyer because I just think that you kind of even if you're even if you're doing the IMS bearing, that's a unbelievable value. Come on, JP, how can you more car for less money than that thing right there? I mean, it's it's straight up the IMS thing. I mean, that's why it didn't get more money. If it had an IMS wow, on the ridiculous. record, it would have gone uh, very close to into our bed range, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, good. Oh my God. Yeah, and then the look, a, a, yeah, decent independent will do it for twenty five hundred. I mean, that's mm. like that's anyway worth the price of, price of admission. Uh, we glazed over this nineteen ninety six Dodge Indy Ram pickup truck, uh, the fifteen hundred that looked like the Viper they took to uh, be the pace car of the Indy 500 in 1996. This car only had 17,000 miles, but they rebuilt the motor and kind of ruined it. Uh, I thought it might bring 20. You said 19. It, it uh, sold for $17,750. Um, mm. Actually, your bid was pretty close, to be honest. Mm, yeah. uh, your third win if you're scoring this at home. Uh, and then we looked uh, also on Bring a Trailer, a 1997 Mercedes-Benz GT G. 320 Europa, and I believe mm. the Europa means that it's a two-wheel drive, short wheelbase platform. This one is kind of it kind of bums me because it, I like that short wheelbase, and I expect them to be manual. This one was an automatic, a four-speed automatic. Uh, by by all accounts, this will still go anywhere. Uh, these things are great. You know, it's a longer axle. These are these are rock. Uh, you know, rock climbers. These will climb over. Well, hold on, you're saying that it's not a four-wheel drive? Oh, it is a four-wheel drive, but it's it's a four-speed automatic. Oh, I thought you said it wasn't four-wheel drive because I was going what? It, sorry, it uh, wasn't yeah. a it wasn't yeah. a manual, is what I was trying got to it, say. Got it. Got it. Yeah, because uh, it has the lockers on there. Yeah, these will definitely climb over just about anything and and go anywhere. Yeah. Um, this particular model predates the official ones that Mercedes brought to North America, so this is a gray market car, uh, but it's on a U.S. title and and it had a nice little run. I, I said forty-one. You bet the over at forty-three, and I knew I was in trouble because this thing brought. 43,750. You almost had a Yahtzee Ooh, there, kiddo. Man, so uh, close. But let me show you what a Yahtzee looks like. JP, our final <laughs> of the day. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. <laughs> Playing defense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, so uh, on Bring a Trailer, we had a BMW 320 Touring uh, offered by our other dear friend, Max Monahan. Uh, at Lux Auto Sales in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, Max is a friend of the Bidners. Max will be on the show uh, probably next week. So, JP, see if we can team him up uh, for Tuesday before he goes out of town uh, and right. surfing something crazy. Uh, he's going to spend all the money he made on this BMW. Uh, this is another gray mark car, and it's interesting. We had 320s in the U.S. on the earlier platform. They were four cylinders. This 320 is actually a two-liter in line six, and I was correct. Uh, Max texted me after the show, and he said, "Yeah, you rev the snot out of this car, and they're fun. Manual transmission, rear wheel drive, interesting green color, uh, and pure unobtainium. We just never got the the wagons or the tourings in the U.S. So mm. when somebody brings them in on the 25 year, and you can just put them on almost any uh, title in the U.S., uh, these are cars that are." Just absolute enthusiast gold. Uh, this would be great at Radwood. This would be great on a back road rally. Uh, and it's it'll turn all the heads at Cars and Coffee. And it's just a modest little wagon. So there you go, JP. I said 25. You said 26. Uh, it sold for 25. I was right. You should have listened to me. Uh, Yahtzee. So, well, uh, actually, if defense, you recall, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. My, you did. You said 25, but I had already been. I wasn't listening. So we You're like, no, that's what I said. I'm like, oh, gosh, dang it. Well, I guess I'll go true. over. That's true. We should both, be a could Yahtzee. we get dual Yahtzees? Yeah. Do, See, yeah, dual Yahtzees. We do have some uh, <laughs> changes coming to the way we do this in, in the future. So <laughs> we would have both gotten a Yahtzee on that one. But uh, that would have been funny. But boy, that's, uh, that's how you put up some defense because you had a nice white wash yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, and then Max, here's a 
everyone. Uh, Max Teddy later, and he his bid, and I can't say it because he owns the car. Mm. Uh, his bid would have come in for both of us. So he's like, man, he goes, you, I thought it was going to be blah, blah, blah. And I was like, really? I'm like, look at yeah. what you have. This is a great car. So I, he was being modest probably. But anyway, Max Monahan is on show next week. Uh, Chachi, you're in, you're on deck, man. And uh, there you go. That's yesterday. Uh, we didn't get a lot of time to talk about this car yesterday because we kind of ran long on some other things and we had some technical issues. But I love these wheels so oh. hard. These steel yeah. wheels are just so dope. I'm just Dude, like, they that, did sway the wheels bars, alone. They did oh, God, I want this car. The, yeah. the steering wheel is on there. You saw that. I think it's a Sparco wheel, like a yeah. dished Sparco Alcantara wheel. I, that car is cool. And because it's a six, I bet that thing runs, man. Like that's yeah. like, yeah. oh, I, I, that'd be a fun car to drive. Yeah, it needs absolutely. maybe a more aggressive seat with all this stuff they did to the suspension. But other than that, I'm, we're nitpicking here. Nice car. Good times. All right. Well, let's see here. Let's uh, let's move on to today's cars. That was yesterday's cars. That's our little uh, dose of accountability. We we go over <laughs> our numbers. We don't just throw numbers out there and say this is the number and then go on and you never hear us about it. You know, it's not like uh, it's not like we just we can throw a number into space and just make you accept it. Nope. We go back and we say, were we right or were we wrong? And sometimes we're right. Usually we're way wrong, but uh, I, I think we did pretty good yesterday. Not too bad. I think we were pretty close on all of our bids, um, even though I won more. <laughs> I'll take it when I can. Um, what is today's car? Today we have some interesting cars. We were going to have Bradley Brownell uh, oh. from Rad for Sale on today, but uh, Rad for Sale should have launched at the beginning of the week. They are failure to launch uh, this week because they are having some technical issues, but good on them yeah. uh, for being on top of it and making sure that the that the thing is working correctly. There's nothing worse than launching and have it not our, work. And, and our, la yeah. our launch of Stratus was, you know, technically you could say it was like a year behind schedule, which is, uh, you know, Lance would probably slap me for saying that. But mm. the reality is we were trying to get open you know, and up and running prior to like August. And, yeah. and, you know, we scraped and scratched and crawled to get that thing live. I mean, it was, to, I had never been part of a startup. And so now Bradley mm. is, uh, I feel for the guy. It, it's just not yeah. easy. You, you put it up and then everybody in the office looks at it. And you're, we're all vetting what the, uh, you know, the writer or the engineer ends for. And then everybody's like, well, what about this? And then you, you turn, you put a page and you hit a wall. You're like, oh my God, it's not ready yet. Yeah. And you just can't, you can't launch a bad product. So please, we're feeling for you, buddy, man. Hang in there. Uh, and and I, listen, take as much time as you need. You, you only get one chance to make a first impression. And you, yeah. you don't want end users going, what's up with your system, dude? It's just yeah. not cool. Yeah. 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 And so. those guys are all really smart fellas. Uh, and they're on the case. And they're they're true enthusiasts. So uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed for them. Uh, that, and, and wish them a lot of success. Uh, but uh, it, with that in mind, let's talk about some rad cars. I don't know. You know, we talked about yeah, this we Focus did RS. Cars for you. We yeah, we, yeah, Bradley, if you're watching, <laughs> rad. Um, yeah. We uh, we there's one car in particular today that we're going to talk about that I wanted to juxtapose against that Focus RS okay. that we talked about yesterday. The Focus RS is probably on paper the best front wheel drive car of all time, but in my opinion, Ooh. the best front wheel <laughs> drive car of all time is this 1990 Jetta GLI. Wow! Um, I, I on take. on paper RS the the Focus sure it's better, but I'd wouldn't you way rather have this car check this out guys no, michael d I, tell I, us about I, this car i'll tell you about our, i'll also give you my take i think the greatest front drive car of all time is the integra type r with a limb slip differential that jetta does not have torque steer at all don't get me wrong the jetta gli is probably top three but i wouldn't say the greatest of all time this one is interesting though JP. michael it deeb you didn't do your research this one does have a but they didn't come from LS. the factory that way right true but this one yeah, does okay. and this one has a yeah. two liter engine go ahead and give us the specs yeah. and then we'll get to it all right yeah this guy did some stuff to this car yeah. uh jp by all accounts an enthusiast owned this one um yes. it was an accident on the carfax and somebody said uh value be damned i'm just gonna throw money at this thing and make it a driver and uh the laundry list reads like uh, a parts catalog um they rebuilt the it's a so it's a, it's an engine swap it's a two liter um super tech pistons uh and and audi connecting rods it's got a ported and polished cylinder head uh to tectonics tuning uh spec camshafts larger undercut intake valves and tapered valve guides uh port match 50 millimeter intake manifold bosch Montronic fuel injection system Eurospec exhaust manifolds and downpipes that means it's going to sound good uh it's got a 16 valve chip 
um, and the uh, uh, somebody else aftermarket serpentine belt conversion and uh, something else, another interface so he can probably data log. Uh, really neat stuff. Uh, and look at the wheels that it's sitting on. Those are, I think, a plus one inch, and it looks like it's lowered. Uh, so with all the things that have been done to this car, you've got a great platform. You've got a balanced chassis. Um, you've got great Recaro seats. You've got a fantastic steering and shifter. And now you've got the motor and suspension to match. Um, JP, you know, we want the GLI, but we really want it to drive like this. I'm guessing... Mm -hmm. You're looking at uh, probably 160 horsepower, which you know mm. may only be like 35, 40 horsepower more than stock. But you're talking that's like 40% yeah. more than what it came with. It's going to feel tremendous. <clears throat> These cars are lightweight coming out of the gate. Um, so any little amount of horsepower torque is going to feel like got from the seat of the pants as the driver. Yeah. Um, and it's the great platform from which to build your dream driver's car. Uh, and these cars turn heads, you just don't see it. And only the enthusiasts will sit there and rubberneck and understand how special these cars are. Um, you know, Volkswagen only made so many of them. Uh, most of the Jettas were Econo cars. And so the GLIs were their hot rod versions. And to see one that's been turned up to 11 uh, certainly gets me going. My legs are thumping going, man, <laughs> I would like to drive this car. Uh, I just think it's really cool. Uh, true mileage unknown probably, or at least the chassis is showing 235,000 miles. But cosmetically, um, it doesn't look completely rinsed away. It looks like a 100,000-mile car. It does not look like a 200,000-mile car. If the interior is clean, if there was no water intrusion and nobody smoked in it, uh, I, I, you're going to love those seats and that interior. It would be fantastic. You and I probably can't say enough nice things, but I'll shut up and give it to you. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, it's... It's got a five lug uh, conversion too, so it's got uh, you know it's got the better BBS wheels. You did notice that they are the larger ones for sure. It's yep. like they took everything that the everything that the Jetta didn't quite have from the factory uh, when this car came out. The enthusiast that had a hold of this car went and did all the right upgrades. You know, mm -hmm. like you said, the two liter engine is just the right amount of power. You know, whereas that uh, the original stock sixteen valve, um, super fun, but not. You know, but definitely a little bit underpowered. You, Michael Deeb, uh, for those of you who don't know, has one of the nicest uh, Cosworth <laughs> 190s out there. And oh, so you weird. can really appreciate this kind yeah. of four-door box platform uh, with an engine that you got to rev the snot out of. So having that Absolutely. two liter in here it's a, it's makes a good all the difference. Yeah. Because this car probably makes the same amount of power as my car, but this car yeah. probably weighs... I kid you not, JP. This car probably weighs 400 pounds less. Uh, uh, yes. You know, you know what I mean? For like, sure. Yeah, you get, yeah. that's the thing, you know, we commented on your car. It feels like it's, it's made out of a single piece of steel carved out of one yeah. block, right? Yeah. Uh, it's the, a great the, platform. The, the GLI, the Jetta feels like it was uh, carved out of one beer can. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it doesn't weigh anything and, and consequently yeah. it feels it's, a little flexy, but it does, it, they are just, oh man, there's so much fun to drive. Uh, again, for a front wheel drive car and then to have an lsd put it in on top of that you're just gonna have yeah, yeah. tons and tons yeah. and tons of fun on this thing uh yeah. i don't the, love that it's the, from florida that's the biggest knock on this right. car and i don't love that it's red uh but i do like the yeah. gold wheels i think that's a nice touch uh yeah. good job um, my man um those are the greatest seats of all time other than the recaro are, sportsters the modern are. ones I, yeah. I wish i wish i had those seats in leather in my mercedes that's for yeah. sure what a difference yeah. would that make jp Whew. you know the seats, <laughs> yeah. the seats yeah. the seats in my car are actually designed by Recaro, but they're probably the lamest Recaro seats they've yeah. ever made. They're, yeah. they're really they're really flat. And so you and your passenger flop around in the car, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. Uh, the knock on the Jetta uh, and all the Volkswagens from this era is because they're front wheel drive and these the 16 valves, the hot ones, have power. So when you're in a turn and you're, you know, you're, you're cranking that wheel and you open that throttle, the torque steer is such that the, the wheels want to straighten out so that they can find traction and, and yeah. go down the road. You're trying to hold it in a turn, and you're fighting a steering wheel that's pushing back on you. The limited slip differential, which is an aftermarket gizmo on this car, eliminates that. And I'm going to put the car down. It's hard not having to fight the steering wheel. Uh, so I could not agree with you, but that's probably, besides all the power, uh, yeah. probably the single greatest grade to making this an even better driver's car than it came from BW. So, Great way wow. to understand the principles of a trailing throttle oversteer. <laughs> With there that you much go. Yeah. wheel drive, man. Uh, right. way, I'm still going straight. Yeah. What's going they, on? <laughs> they, they couldn't. They couldn't sell these cars today. Think of think of a Ugh. poor 20 year old kid that's texting on his phone and he's in a turn and he opens a throttle. He'll go right yeah. into oncoming traffic. I mean, that would just be so dangerous. Well, you know, I mean, they don't have that much power. 
power. I mean, that's the thing. It's they do have the power, but it's all at the end. I mean, yeah, there's like no is. power yeah, yeah. until like yeah, the last two hundred RPMs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I talk about my good buddy Zach all the time. He has one of these. He bought it like he's got a ninety two the last car. year. Yeah, uh, it's that uh, celery green. Uh, you want that car? I um, want that. I tell Zach that the, I understand that the bidding starts at fi- fifty thousand dollars, and I'm yeah, in. Let him he's know in. He's ready. All right, there but you he's go. Ready. I, I'm in. Trade him for, for your 50. Cosworth. He might. He might. Uh, might be in on that. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, all right. Where's this car gonna land? Is is great as this car is it's, it's not it's not original it's it's got a lot no. of aftermarket bits and yeah. that doesn't necessarily help yeah. the value so what's it what's this, this car do? appeals to a, a very small win, uh you know uh, collection of enthusiasts yeah. yeah audience uh it plays to a small audience it's offered out of miami it is on a no reserve auction jp mm. uh and it is one of all of our cars today it's the only one that got a bid overnight from what my homework mm. last night but that being said, it's languishing at sixty five hundred dollars. If it was all original, about a hundred thousand less miles, this would be twice as much money where yeah. it sits. But there's an accident on the Carfax, and it's completely modified. And we're assuming that it'll pass the smog. Uh, that being said, it does have thirteen bids. Um, but I just, I, as much as I love it, I don't think it's going to bring uh, ten grand. So my bid, mm-hmm. JP, is nine thousand five hundred. All right. Uh, I'm going to bet on a late rally on this. It'll be interesting if this thing breaks 10,000 because, you know, we talked about that amazing Corrado last week. We've talked about some of these cars. Volkswagens just kind of fail to launch. Um, But this car has all the right mods and it fits in a category. Unlike the, uh, the Focus RS guys, our age, uh, one of these when we were the the focus our age kids age and um, so there's there's a nostalgia buy here uh, and this has all the right mods so someone our age could get in this car and drive it and really dig it as a weekend fun car uh, or yep. go do autocross or go rip on the mountains and stuff like that or just whatever want to relive your uh, teenage years uh, and get the car that you wanted um, I'm gonna I'll go over I'm gonna say 11 I'm gonna get wow. strong on this Ooh. thing um, I'm probably wow. hurting myself because it's out of Florida that, and but uh, it's got all the right bits, man. This is a cool car. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I I think if if it with two hundred forty thousand miles and all these mods, if it didn't mm-hmm. have the bad Carfax, yeah. I, I'd say your bid would be soft. Uh, but the Carfax might hurt it. I, but who knows? We'll How much does the Carfax bit. matter on a car? That has I don't. It's two hundred thousand miles it and should, it, and isn't it, it, even fifteen thousand bucks. I mean, to, to you and I, zero. Uh, yeah. uh, but you know, you and I are the two smartest guys on the planet. Mm. Ask anybody at P car. So if it were know. a salvage market, if it were a salvage, it'd be a different story. But just an accident on the uh, on I the. I know. It's right. it's not a salvage, guys. Just to be yeah. clear. It just has yeah. an accident. Who cares? It's a pimple on a supermodel. Who cares? <laughs> it's nineteen. It's from nineteen ninety. <laughs> people, this thing has been around yeah. a while. Someone could have bumped into it. All right. Here, uh, here's the thing. Let's get VW's to the next car. VWs are dear to our hearts. Good luck to the sellers. So, yeah. Uh, they just on. don't bring the strong money, though. That's for sure. I know. I know. All right. Uh, okay. Cars and Bids is offering a 2018 Range Rover Sport that oh, is super Okay. We are off the rad tip for a second here. We're stepping for out second, into... Yeah. Um, this is just a, just a really neat chunk of automotive, like, <laughs> you know, FU money. Uh, this is a used car, JP, with 35,000 miles on it. It's two, like two going three years old. This SUV with 520 horsepower from a five-liter supercharged V8. It's an automatic uh, eight-speed. It's all-wheel drive. Um, I'm not sure that you'd want this in the snow. It's got too much power and too tall a wheel. Uh, yeah. But, man, if you, uh, you know... Uh, if you sold some of your stocks, that's the uh, that's the thing you'd go out and buy, uh, or what you'd want to lock your family up in, uh, and make sure they're safe. Uh, this guy put wheel spacers on it. Love that touch. Uh, Twenty millimeter wheel spacers, just about twenty fives in the rear. Um, other than that, it's basically stock. No nonsense. No stories. Uh, listen, this is the status symbol around the world. Range Rovers uh, outside of the U.S. are like the ultimate like bad guy car this is the, this is yeah. what bad guys are driving in all the movies that are being canned today yeah. uh, so what do you think black JP? ones I, but yeah, yeah. Um, any, <laughs> any love for something like this uh, i mean this is yeah. this is newport beach uh you know personified yeah. is it this not? is definitely uh, i don't know this is definitely new crypto money right here with the with the for um, sure. uh, you know i want to love these uh honestly you know i'll divert off of this car and talk about you know like a 2006 range rover sport that that generation that 2006 to right. what 11 or whatever um yeah. just one of the probably the the best looking um mm-hmm. suv of all time uh, i mean they just yeah. look so great and i want one so yeah. bad and i love yeah. the way they drive uh but they're just such pieces this is a 
garbage. They just right. It's Land Rover, and every time I like consider, I'm like, eh, eh, and I just keep myself from pulling the trigger. Uh, our good uh, friend David Sullivan, who's probably watching one of our fans and 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 personal friends of ours, <laughs> um, he has some amazing horror stories on his, uh, and you know, it, under warranty. Even if they're under warranty, we always say, I always knock like Audi and and a lot of these European right. cars for you know don't have them out of warranty. Uh, I agree. Least, yeah, with at least with like a, a late Mercedes or Audi. If something does fail and you're under warranty or Volkswagen, it's t- it, you can get it taken care of. With the Land Rovers, it can be under warranty and they'll fix it once. But when it fixes, when it breaks the next three times, you're on the hook for it. They stop yeah. fixing stuff for you, uh, oh, even man. though it's, you it's have brutal. a warranty on paper. They do not take care of their customers at all. It's horrible, um, and which means never. Sp- a new one, no yeah. way, no yeah. way. And this, even with a warranty. this car. This car here is going to come out of warranty before it's paid off. And I'm telling yeah. you, man, do not let that happen. You need yeah. to buy an extended warranty or take it back to the dealer and have them certify it for you. You, you just don't an want to own aftermarket, any of these products. An aftermarket warranty would be okay, but a factory warranty? Forget it. The factory guy, the factory will not help you. Uh, there are certain, there are a bunch of things that will go wrong on these, uh, that the factory will just say, sorry, we've already fixed it once you've kind of, you've reached your allotment for that. Um, and the other thing that's crazy about this is Doug DeMuro is part of the reason why Doug DeMuro is famous is because he (laughs) bought a Land Rover Range Rover, you know, probably for, Uh it was a 2009 from CarMax and he kept, and he got their warranty and he kept track. You can watch all of Doug DeMuro's old videos about keeping track of all the warranty. I mean. Oh he bought that God. thing for like fifteen thousand dollars, and CarMax spent like thirty or forty thousand dollars over the years that he had it. And we're talking like things like the steering column breaking while he was driving oh it. My um, God. You know, I mean, just awful. the worst horror stories. Um, oh my yeah. God! Awful, awful. It's car. Great, great to be a British car mechanic in the United States, right, Justin? Yeah, <laughs> right. And so here, yeah. here is this car on cars and bids, oh, uh, a platform man. that arguably would not exist if it weren't for the horrible quality of, of Land Rover Range Rovers. Uh, yeah. Where's this stupid thing going to land? So JP, this car is sitting at a whopping $64,500 on 16 bids offered out of uh, Christianburg, Virginia. Again, just 35,000 miles. Uh, but it's a 2018, so for sure in the next year of driving, this car is either going to time out or mile out of its original manufacturer's warranty. Mm. And you do not want to be caught holding the bag. You definitely want to be out in front of that and have an extended warranty teed up if you're going to buy this car right here. That being said, when they run or when they're not broken, these things drive beautifully and Mm. uh, they're head turners. It is is an interesting piece of kit. Uh, JP, I think our car has a little life left in it. I don't think it's going to make 70. So I will park my bid at $68,000 and ask you. Yeah, I mean, I, what's the book value? What is CarMax going to give you? I mean, you know, and are there any Russian gangster girlfriends uh, watching right now? Because the Russian gangsters mm-hmm. want a black one. Uh, so this is the one that you get for uh, the girlfriend right. or... Um, the mistress. Yeah, the mistress. Uh, I don't know. Um, what's it at right now? 63, 64.5. I'll go 65. I mean, it's cars and business. Wow. Yeah, they don't get the late rallies. <laughs> They don't all get right. the late rallies. All right. Uh, here we go. That's a, uh, all right. Yeah. Russian gangsters pay attention. All right. What's the next car? Let's go back to something rad. That was pretty uh, okay. dang lame. That thing was, well, just, let's, ugh. let's skip ahead and we'll go to, uh, also I'm bringing a trailer, a 1987 Chevy. Yes. I rock Z. Now uh, we're so, talking. Come so on I, now. I'm, yes. I'm a little, I'm a little bit confused by these cars because they make, they make two motors. There's a five liter and a 5.7. But the five liter comes in three different specifications, and I suspect it's to meet three different markets. Uh, how do you say it? Um, smog requirements. Like the California models, uh, when I was growing up in high school, the California models of these only made like 180 horsepower, whereas the 5.7 liters that you could get in Nevada made like 350 horsepower. 20 horsepower. And so, anyway, this is a five liter, but it's the highest spec five liter. It makes 215 horsepower. I don't know what that does to the value today. Um, what I do notice, and the take I was hoping to ask Bradley and you uh, collectively, is that when we see Mustangs from this era, most of them are stick. But it's my perception that when you see Camaros from this era, they're mostly automatic. And this one is a stick, yeah. which I imagine somebody will pay a premium for. But I wondered if you guys 
kind of felt the same way that if this were a Mustang GT, you would almost assume it's definitely a manual transmission. But when you see that it's a Camaro, you go, is it a stick? Because you think it's probably going to be an automatic that, and that's what I sort of suffer from. So this one with just 24,000 miles out of Virginia beach, Virginia with uh, the, the highest spec five liter motor and a manual transmission in my opinion, is a bit of a unicorn. We'd never see IROX, and you, it's even harder to find one that has the gear, the gear shift that we would prefer. So this car, by all accounts, is really clean survivor and probably has uh, an opportunity to make it to like twenty thousand dollars. JP, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I now I don't think the the, the manuals are that rare. They're pretty darn good. Really? Clean. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All um, right. I think uh, you know it seems like the nicer ones that come to market are the automatic ones because they're older people that had them. Probably. You know, uh, That's you know a good the people take. with manuals really uh, beat yeah. the crap out of them, right? right. Um, so, but. Uh, no, I mean, I, I mean that's the thing about American cars in general. You know, we are big Porsche fans. We're fans of uh, you know all this European stuff, uh, and you know, go into a nine, go into a Porsche dealership and try to find a manual. I mean, you're gonna have to order it. You're gonna have to give up your firstborn, your secondborn, you know, your dog, whatever else you got. Um, you know, your your girlfriend's jewelry. Uh, you have to and you're wait gonna have, and you're gonna have to wait allocation. a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just not gonna happen. Allocation. Go into a, a Chevrolet dealership or a Ford dealership and say, I want the baddest ass uh, Camaro version of the Camaro or Mustang. And they've got three of them on the floor with a manual. They're right there. Yep. They have them. Yep. You know, you don't have to wait. You can just drive out of there. And so all the knocking of uh, American cars that we do here, we, at the end, you got to go like, hey, wow, these guys at least they still appreciate the manual. You can still get three pedals. Um, But yeah, so this car, I mean, is so eighties. If you grew up in the eighties, this was the car. I mean, I grew up out in the woods, so um, Camaros and Mustangs (laughs) and stuff like that. I, you know, I had cow tip and hick friends uh, and this was the car to have, (laughs) right? You know, the, uh, the, 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 the football players, if you had a letterman jacket and your father was rich uh, and had a really cool farm, uh, you (laughs) drove one of these, right? If you were, uh, if you're, if you're, parents were yuppies and went to the city to work and you were a rich kid you had a 16 valve Scirocco so it was like one or the other this is the it was either the Scirocco or this thing um you know the values of these I've not seen really take off it's not like there's a shortage of them they're they made so many of these cars and they were cheap for so long they are starting to creep up a little bit just like everything from this era uh this does appear to be a nice one but where it it will land is going to be interesting to see and may kind of set the new mark because we haven't seen a ton of them for sale on BAT no way more Mustangs than Camaro especially the IROX Mm -hmm. um and so it'd be interesting if if this one because it's a stick because it's low miles Mm -hmm. um has a nice run that that would bring a few more to the marketplace because they say, Oh, well, hell I've got one of those or my uncle's sitting on one. I'll go get it sold for him. The other thing <laughs> to mention too, deep that uh, we haven't talked about here real quick before we get to the value is that this is a slick top. Um, m- you know, oh, it's man. mostly I rocks that were, were T were T tops, T-tops. And, yeah. And I certainly personally prefer a T top because it's more fun to drive around. Um, yeah. But, uh, but the value is certainly going to be better for a slick top. Uh, it's more true. rare, Good. and you know how people are with their tops and their cabrio phobes. Uh, all right, Good so where's this catch. one going to land? Uh, so here we go, JP. Uh, 87 with just 24,000 miles out of Virginia Beach, sitting at $13,000 currently on 19 bids with about three and a half hours to go. Um, I feel like this car uh, might have a little life in it. Um, and so we shall see. I think it could break 20. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say $21,000 just because I just don't remember seeing one as nice as this. If I had to buy one, this is the one I'd want slick top manual. Why not? You know, it's weird because, uh, all right. So what is it? Uh, fourth gen Corvettes, like C4s and stuff like that. You can get Z06s, uh, on the market right now. Uh, C4s, uh, in that, or did they make a Z, Z06? Would it be a ZR1? I don't know. I, yeah. ZR1. Yeah. ZR1 you know, I mean, they're like that. 20 grand, you know? So it's like, yep. um, it's odd that it feels like the Camaros uh, have so much more 80s cred, even though the Corvette right. couldn't be more 80s. Um, right. It, 
you know, yeah, I feel like you're right. I feel like this car should get 20, but I know that a lot of other American metal is pulling that kind of money, uh, including yeah. something like a Corvette that's way more car. Certainly a C5 you're right. Corvette. A, a 90, uh, a 90 yeah. yeah, like a 91 or a 92 or 90 CR1, yeah. what you said, that would have maybe a little more miles than this Camaro. Uh, but you could get it in that same ballpark of right mm. around or just over 20 grand, which I was surprised. That was a great take uh, a, a month ago uh, or so. Um, and the Corvette's a better driver with an independent rear suspension. This is a yeah. live rear axle. Don't forget, this is a drag race car. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not a great driver's car. This is a, but this is a donut machine right here. Yeah. Even though, yeah, even though they made way more of these, most of them have been beat to snot. And when you see one that looks like it's been parked in a garage for 30 years, you have to go. Oh snap! Look at that thing. So I. What I was the miles on this again? Twenty four thousand. Twenty four thousand. Yeah, that's really low miles. It's yeah. almost at twenty bids. Uh, yeah. You know, and and the contemporary Camaros are selling like hotcakes. They make yeah. a great performance car. Um, what, so what I was just your think bid? this. I say twenty one. I just I'm gonna okay. go step on my Johnson and think that this car has a chance to set a new high, and then we'll see more of them on the market. Uh, I'm going to say you're right. And I'm going to bet the over on this and go 22. Wow. I think it could make 25. I mean, it's just so clean yeah. and slick topness. And I think it's in the right part of the country. A lot of people really like these types of cars on this side, on the East side yeah. of the country, more than necessarily the West. Um, a lot more muscle heads there. Uh, this car would do great in, in Las Vegas. Um, oh, but it would be shit. better if it were a T top cause you could cruise the strip and, uh, have that. that is good. Um, yeah. all right, well, let's move on. It'll be an interesting one to watch and, uh, maybe Camaros are coming up. And if it does reach that kind of money, I, suspect we'll see more of them hitting the market yeah yeah and, and as far as like love lines you know bradley that i rocks for you <laughs> yeah buddy yeah. all right let's uh, move get, along we're a little long here my, my brother okay here we go so a 1995 mazda mm. miata m edition i, I just mm. you know i love these cars and i thought it'd be fun to look at one of these with bradley on the show so uh another radwood eligible uh, steed uh out of statesboro georgia jp this car has forty two thousand miles on it uh this is uh, Mica Merlot exterior with the BBS um, mesh wheels and a limited slip differential. Those are the three main contributors to this being the special M edition. Mm -hmm. uh, these do get a premium because they made, you know, it, but as far as Miata is concerned, they made a limited. That said, they made like 2000 or something ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, don't need to read the notes. These cars aren't that valuable, uh, but it's nice to see one of these. Uh, come market. The BBS wheels will be lighter. Uh, the limited slip differential uh, will do the same thing to the rear as it would for the Jetta on the front. It'll help put the power down um, and make it easier to drive uh, in, in anger. Uh, and our car is sitting at $7,400 on 16 bids. Um, listen, neither one of us wants a Miata, but if I had to have one, this is probably the one I would take. Does that make sense? You know? Yeah. 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 Does this have power steering? Uh, I know some no. of them don't. There's no power steering yeah, on this I, one. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. I mean, most of them, most Miatas do. So it's right. rare that they don't. So was that was the lack of power steering part of the M edition? Right. Or I did, yeah, okay. I couldn't tell. Because um, that that makes a huge difference on how these are uh, track wise. You know, because obviously these make uh, fantastic little track rats. Uh, so many people we know, even people in Porsche clubs and stuff like that, they don't want to wreck their Porsches on the track, so they go out and buy uh, Miatas just because you can buy parts for next to nothing on it. It's sitting at seventy four hundred bucks. How many miles did you yeah. say it had on it? So it's a 7,600 now. It's just got 42,000 miles and it's really mm, clean. You know, yeah. a lot of Miatas get parked outside because yeah. they're just inexpensive, like economy cars. And as such, most of them from this era, these early generation cars are just really beat up and because of the challenge they're not. It's nice. What uh, What do you think it's going to make? Where, where are we going to land on this thing? Yeah, not, not far up ahead. Um, I, I said 15 originally, but I'm going to change my bet down to 13 because it hasn't gotten much action this morning. Uh, and if it goes less than that, congratulations to the buyer. I think you kind of, kind of stole it. So there you go. All right. I'm, I'm going to go pretty soft on this. I mean, I think it's neat, but, you know, is it worth 10 grand? I don't know. I'm going to say 10. I'm going to give All us right. a fairly decent spread on that. All right. We have one car left to do, JP, and we're going to go Italian. We're staying on Bring a Trailer today. Not much else that the other auction sites had to keep us interested. Mm. Uh, but it's another 1974 Alfa Romeo GTV with uh, just 90,000 miles offered out of San Mateo, California. Um, this two-liter motor has uh, benefited from a carb conversion. So they took the spike of fuel injection system off and put a pair of Weber carburetors on there, uh, which really kind of unleashes that two-liter. Uh, they also upgraded the wheels to uh, these 15-inch GTA-look wheels, uh, which allows you to have a better section of performance rubber uh than what's left available uh four inch wheel these car originally come with it also improves the look 
Uh, most of the cars are red, JP. So when you see a flat dark blue one, and the guy even did the inboard uh, uh, high beams in the sort of French driving lights of yellow, uh, which is a great contrast to the blue paint. I, this is just a really cool car. And this one looks like it's going to be another record breaker. So we're looking at mm. um, $58,000 on 21 bids. Um, wow. Again, offered out of San Mateo, California. Uh, this car looks like it's poised with just two hours to go. It looks like it's poised to have a strong finish. There could be another ten grand in this car. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, as we've done this show, this is not a car that I ever really paid attention to, uh, but I've learned a lot from you on these, and uh, mm-hmm. you'd think I would know more about them at this point. Uh, but I still, I'm, I'm always amazed when I see them, and it's great to see more and more of them coming up um they look like just a fantastic driver's car and i really love that it seems like most of the owners that have tried to sell these have made like halfway decent driver videos i, I like yeah. this the guy's out on a road that's actually not in traffic uh yep. and he's having a good time look at that don't you want to be there instead of here listening Absolutely. to us right now i mean if you could Absolutely. if you could drive that road and stream the bid nerds podcast while you're taking these corners i mean oh, is is dead. there a better place to be uh <laughs> than that i can think of nothing better uh Okay, so yeah, the one thing I've learned is these cars are worth a lot more than I thought they were. Uh, oh, you man. said it's at 50 nice all, 58 already, so where's it going to yep. go? Uh, JP, I put 70 because this one looks nice yeah. and he's got some good assets. It's photographed well. Uh, by all accounts, this car is worth in the mid to high 60s, but uh, we'll see. It's on 21 bids, still has two hours to go. It's in California. It's a nice one. And you said 70? I said 70. I'm going pretty high on this one. Okay, I'm going to go under on that. I'm going to say 68 just because as much as, I mean, yeah, the blue is a unique color and that's great, but it seems like uh, red is just so much better <laughs> on this car. I mean, you know, it just it's kind of like a Ferrari. I feel like if you're going to get a Ferrari, you want a red one. Uh, and so will the blue color help or hinder this car? That'll be interesting no, to see. You, could, you would know better in, that, in this market. Is that a color that's going to hurt or help this car? It's interesting, you know, listen, with Ital- Italian cars, it's always been Ferrari, but it's with almost any Italian car, especially a sports car, they call it resale rent, and that, mm-hmm. that usually they usually pay a premium. But, um, you know, Porsches, and Paul made this take when he was on the show with us, that there's this interesting thing in this, like, decade or almost, you could say, 15 years that – it's been the decade of the odd color and that mm. we find out paint a sample. And when we look back on older cars, uh, unusual colors, people are coming out of the woodworks to pay a premium for cars that are unique. Uh, and I would say that that could apply. And it'll be interesting. If this car makes it to 70, I'll say uh, it's because it was a nice one and it because it was blue. Uh, if this was a red car, I don't think it would bring 70,000. So. All right. Well, cool. Good take. Uh, it'll be interesting to find out. So there it is, guys. Um, you can <coughs> watch the auctions today and check our uh, our predictions. We'll have the links to all these cars in the uh, information about the video below. We do that every day. Uh, so if you watch the show and you want to see, if you watch the show after the auctions and you want to check us, you can just, there it is. <laughs> There's the link. So you can yeah. see how we did. Uh, yeah. And we, like I said, we are accountable right there. Um Okay. So follow along and give us some suggestions on what cars you guys want to see, uh, because we love to hear uh, suggestions from our audience and we love to review cars that maybe we wouldn't have chosen uh, because this right. is the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids and Bring a Trailer as chosen by us and you, uh, the other bid nerds <laughs> out there, uh, because we know there are lots of nerds out there. We know that you're a bid nerd. You, we know that you sit there and you go to work and you're at your computer and you have Cars and Bids sitting there. You have uh, Bring a Trailer and you're watching specific cars cars and stuff so why not listen to a couple of chuckleheads be completely wrong about everything uh, <laughs> while you work uh it would oh this is God. a if you're just listening to this on uh on the podcast uh you can actually see what we look like how big a dorks we are uh on youtube every single day we go live every day on youtube at about the nine o'clock hour so subscribe like hit the no- notification button and uh share this with a friend you guys let the other nerds oh, know man. that they're that you're people everybody yeah. yeah um the nerd herd is growing that's right grow that nerd herd well guys oh, that sounded bad uh we will see you tomorrow and we'll deal with that growth then uh for another edition of bid nerds your daily nerd on the most interesting cars of the day and cars and bits thank you michael deep absolutely thank you very much We're great to be here. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> do you uh do you like those porsches you like the yeah, Porsches? The Porsche. Get the yeah, oh, you like the Mercedes. Oh, you like the Mercedes.